boys. Need a wash. Starting them up for their monthly startup. My 85 GMC three quarter ton High Sierra camper special. Hundred, it just turned 125,000 K. airbags. Uh, you don't really need the front ones for most loads but uh, what they're really good for when you have your camper on if you come to uh, a campsite that's just a little bit out of, out of level off grade a little bit well you don't have to pull out the blocks and drive them up on the ramps you can you can adjust it you know within reason and you can get to your beer faster that way yeah eh, dirty what we got yeah I think it just turned 125 yeah. mm, just starting to come up now Needs wheels and tires and an exhaust system. A rattly old muffler. Yeah, no. But it's all been restored. Frame off. New suspension. Beefarama for sure. That's a that's just past ten years I restored this. Ten years, four months. And I never put it on the road. It's been in storage. I'm parked in there. This one's been in the yard with a teepee over it. Oh, we'll finish off with this one. Let's have a look. 350. Four barrel, obviously. And a 400 tranny. It's all original. I didn't touch it because it runs so good. Uh, that's about the only comforts that it has. No air, no power windows. You know. No tint. Uh, there's tilt wheel. It's got a tilt. But all the inside's been redone. Painted all that. Didn't even come with a radio. Still got the base plate on there. Two 20 gallon tanks, saddle tanks. Yeah, nice truck. But I got this thing here 83 4x4, four four, three quarter ton diesel. And I've been driving that for a long time. And the body started to really go on it. So 
I parked it and just got a little S10. Been driving that for a long time. Actually, the tires are pretty good on the front here to clean them up. But I've been using it for a donor truck. Diesel runs great. It's too bad, you know. But it's got like 300 and. 60,000 K on it. Flat tire in the back on the other side, so it's tilting a little bit. But this has been one of my most reliable vehicles I've ever had. And here's my current project 86 Chevy Custom Deluxe four speed. Four by four. And I've customized it a little bit. Got stainless steel resonators. Two and a half inch exhaust. And the two and a half is uh, 14 gauge. It's thicker walled. When you um, once you go over two inch, it increases in gauge. So that's good. It's gonna last a little longer because getting stainless steel components is too hard. Farting around with that stuff, you can't just get the straight pipe and take it down to your local muffler shop and get them to bend it up for you because he. I don't know, it doesn't work in their mandrels or something. And I put another engine in this one. And put a CB in it there. A couple months ago. around the bush it's nice to have a reference to see where the where you are pulling out the maps Google earthing it and this one's got weather ten weather stations on it becoming southeast Cobra 29 early Thursday morning uh, wind increasing to southeast 25 to 35 LX? Thursday I remember now so that's just hours, like the changing to rain the classic Cobra ending early 29 but they've gone digital and it has the 10 Out weather stations for Johnson Strait for Friday oh that's kind of good 15 to 25 knots diminishing to southeast it's always nice to know what's going on I got my put my iPods in the ashtray here. And connect to the USB, so that's always nice. Temperature to Todd loves it. Right, Duke? What do you think? You like the truck, don't you? Should we go for a ride? Wow. Can't really go for a ride. <laughs> no lights in the back. No insurance. Yeah, no. LED lights. Yeah, I got a bunch of. Sex lights down here. Pressure 102.0 Entrance pilot, temperature 8, wind. These are great because they're really low light. To 16 knots. Qualicum, temperature 8, and wind, east, south, east. You can turn them on at night. Sisters, pilot, they illuminate the floor and it doesn't bother you when you're driving. And I've got four. I got a pair of auxiliary lights. Pair of reverse lights with an indicator, so I'm not driving around with those on. I know that's that's not legal, but you know I'm only using it for backing up. Turn it off. 
Good for illuminating the campsite when you come in at night. And I have two pair of auxiliary and then those will be behind the plate, those will be off-road lights. Take the plate off and move it down to the lower bolts and then drive on the gravel road. This one's got a 307 in it. The 305 was starting to pump oil into the new gaskets that just haven't broken in yet. The door gaskets. 305, the original 305 was starting to dump oil. Into the air cleaner compartment. So, I like the small, I like the 5 liter, so I put, uh, 307 comes with a 2 barrel, and they got the small valves, a 172 intake, 150 exhaust. So I put uh, 350 heads on with the 194 intake, a Performer Eldenrock, uh, RV cam headers. I want to get the shields there. I just got tin foil on it for now. I'll probably blow off as you're going down the road eventually. New decals. <laughs> I got a gauge here that I put in, put in, but it doesn't work. I think it's the, uh, the pro improper sending switch. So I'll muck with that. Needs a belt. See the, the nylon is starting to wear on the on one edge. Dual batteries. Yeah, I got a gauge in there. Well, Yeah, I can't wait to take this one for a ride. Hella halogen lights. And, uh, I put a new CB antenna on it there with a whip. reverse lights and I actually these were virtually new tanks and I put them in like the last year I was driving this thing and they were like cherry 20 gallons this thing only came with 16 gallon tanks so that's always nice more fuel New tires, new rims. I have the center caps, new center caps. I haven't put them in yet. Overloaders on the back. Uh, that piggyback style. And I got airbags in the front. Nice and warm in there, hey Dukes? Oh, are you bacon? Look at him go. Needs a wash. Vacuum. It's been in storage. Under the house. 
there. And I did a quick lease with my dash. I might just dye that back a piece of piece of leather and dye it black. Just to cover over a crack here. It's had some cracks in the middle. Kind of bugging me. Yeah. Looking at uh, February the 9th, and this is winter time. But man, is it ever mild? It's almost t-shirt weather. A little bit of a cold snap there for a couple of weeks. It got up to or down to about minus eight, <clears throat> but it was averaging about minus two. But it would come up above freezing every day, so it didn't really get into the deep freeze. Uh, I'm working on the box here for Big Red. That's yeah, been a lot of work. made this one up this is from Big Blue I cut this section out here somewhere around here welded that in that was in good shape Re replacement panel over the top this one I took from Big Blue that was in good shape Probably one of the only parts on the truck that was still in good shape. And here, uh, factory, this is the, the rear, it's up like this, factory piece there, but it only comes to here, right there, not not even there, not even in line with, the, with this one, it's back here. So I had to make up this piece right in here and that was kind of tough. This is pretty well ready for paint now. So red. Red everywhere. Black. Black from the trim down as the theme goes. And this is good Endura. And I'm going to uh, scuff it up and get the uh, gravel guard or undercoating and put it all in here around the hoop all across there you know get it get it right up to here needs prep in there and then my inner well which still needs to be this is new aftermarket I want to put my endure on that and then the the gravel guard or the undercoating. So where it attaches here. I'm not going to weld it. Weld it in the places there. I'm just going to use uh, pop rivets. And of course it bolts to the fender well then there's no heat in here and if I'm putting tar everywhere well I'm gonna catch the tar on fire too if I spot weld that so you're gonna see the pop rivet heads but it's about a longevity for this truck I it's not a show truck you know so you'll see the heads you'll see the heads here and there but I'm gonna put some uh, flaps, mud flaps in the back to cover up a few of them at least. Yeah, get this ready for paint today. And it's been a lot of a lot of time on this, but I figure 
to get a new one probably is going to cost me close to 500 bucks and it's an aftermarket and they never seem to fit as good as the OEM and they could even be you know thinner gauge too it's hard to say I'm not saying they are but I've seen panels before and I've mic'd them up and they're like two gauges less so I haven't uh, got into it to see what what you get for 500 bucks but you know being in Canada by the time you get it up and duty and brokerage fees and everything and Canadian bucks super sucks right now it's probably the worst it's been in 20 years it just doesn't make sense so and we parts for these trucks aren't really available in Canada that much very limited the States is good for that okay I guess I should get to work now eh park the trucks again they're they're warmed up needs a wash yeah I think I'm gonna put some wheels and tires on this exhaust and she's pretty well done. And I might sell this one. I'm not sure what to do yet. Definitely a good camper truck. But this one is adequate too. I, I like the idea that it's a 5 liter instead of a 5.7. You know? Better fuel economy. You might get, might get 18 with this. And that's like 15, 14, somewhere around there. Got my 87 over here, two-wheel drive, 400 engine, 400 trans. That one's got tinted windows all the way around. Body's in great shape, and that's going to be my next project, restoring that. Seven electronic fuel injection. Yeah, keep him busy with the projects. Right on. Got like the hobbies. <laughs> 